Hey guys, my name is Jeffrey Ribeiro and I'm the owner and operator of Reptile Edge. Today I'm going to be talking about some horror stories when breeding Lichianus. Breeding Lichianus is not for the faint of heart. And if you're not used to rough breeding behavior within your geckos, uh, you're up for something. The thing is, is that with Lichianus is that as noted in some previous videos and th videos that you've probably seen online is that they choose their mate. The, the female in the pair is the deciding factor. If she is comfortable with the male, if she thinks the male is strong enough for her, she will allow him to copulate and then they will be pair bonded for life or at least an extended period of time. So with that being said, when things go wrong, which for me it's happened quite often, it goes really, really wrong. And I'm going to show you some clips of some breeding behavior that I recently recorded the other day that could have turned into a really scary situation. So story time. The other day I was um, coming down to the reptile room and I heard some typical breeding sounds and I figured I was going to create a video such as this just to show the typical breeding behavior of Lichianus. Now when I came down here I set up my camera, I walked away and I was doing some other kind of chores in the re reptile room and I started hearing some odd sounds. The sounds sounded more like fighting rather than um, actual like breeding behavior. So I came back to the cage to only notice that the male who was looking to court the female had now been chomped on the jaw by the female and things were getting more and more aggressive. Now, this is usually normal um, and it's not something I like to jump in on, mainly because I like to let them run their course and if they are to fight a little bit, some pairs just like it rough to be honest and I didn't want to jump in at that point. But in this particular instance, the female ended up biting the male on his jowls and then jumping off the cork bark and effectively going into a death roll. Now this could have turned out really, really bad if I actually wasn't here. She would have ripped off a chunk of his face. It was at a point where she wasn't letting go and the only way she was gonna let go is if that skin let go. So luckily I went into the cage and I grabbed the, the female by her jaw, similar to how you would check crested geckos for calcium sacs, and she effectively let go right away. Um, they were then immediately split up because obviously they are not a compatible pair. This was a new pairing as well, who had been together for almost a week with no signs of any aggression towards each other. Uh, the male now is severely bruised, specifically on his jaw, and I'm going to show you him now. So this is the male. This male is a pure F2 Nuami. Um, he is replacing another one of my males, which was actually paired with this female as well. But as you can tell by his jaw on the side here, these dark marks that you see, and on the top of his head, the female was not having it. And if you see underneath his jaw here, you can see bruising as well. And I don't want to effectively mess with him too much, but 
It was a scary situation. She did leave some marks and um, effectively I had to split him up and now he's on his own just so that he can heal a bit. But as you can tell by the top of his head and everything, like he will heal up fine. The thing with these geckos is they are actually very hardy, but in that situation, it could have turned deadly. So I needed to break them up. So now he's, he's on a break right now. The female is on her own as well. Um, but in that light, he will not be repaired to that female. I do have another plan for him, uh, just in case this was to happen, because she was an aggressor with her last male as well, which I'm going to show you now too. This is One Ball Wonder. One Ball Wonder is a male F2 Nuami that was paired to the same female as that last male. She seems to be a rather bad aggressor and it seems like she's going to need a rather large male um, to pair with her if I was to decide to repair her but now she's actually been paired to two of my males and two of my males are now injured so I won't be effectively pairing her again at least at not at this point so this male specifically um, a few months ago I paired them during the winter and it, they were actually really good last year um, and last year they produced a good six to eight babies and everything was great but one day I noticed something really really wrong I went to the cage and I saw that he had one of his hemipenes um, outside of his body and it was out and it looked really swollen and I started noticing some blood what effectively had happened was that the female and the male were copulating and uh, at the end of the call it process she turned around and bit him on his junk so when she did that, um, it started to swell, it started to bleed, and I put him immediately in a betadine solution just to see if I could disinfect the wound and if it would go back on its own. I also added some honey to the honey peen uh, because that is something that does help them retract it back into their bodies. None of this had worked, so I had to take him to the vet. When I took him to the vet initially, they said that everything was going to be okay. Um, I dropped them off around 10 p.m. I think it was and when I left them they're like okay we were able to reinsert him um, and he should be okay but we want to leave him for the night to make sure that he will be okay. At one o'clock in the morning I got another call from the vet where they had indicated that he went and used the bathroom and his hemipene popped out again and at this point there was a lot of necrosis on it already uh, because of the amount of time that I had spent outside of its body. So they had made the decision to amputate one of his hemipenes. And um, it was a few months where, uh, at least six weeks, where I had to be injecting him constantly. And I do have some videos and pictures on my TikTok and my Instagram as well of this process. Um, and at one point, I didn't think he was going to make it. He wasn't eating, he wasn't drinking, he was severely dehydrated at one point. So I did have to bring him back to the vet where they had injected him with some electric lights just to see if it would, you know, jumpstart his uh, metabolism as well. Um, this effectively didn't work, but then what I did was I bumped up his temperature. So his temperature was bumped up to 83 degrees Fahrenheit, which a lot of people will say is really, really high. Um, but at this point, I was like, I need to jumpstart his metabolism some way, and temperature is the only way. And although he was undergoing a lot of stress at that point, the bump in temperature was a gradual bump. It wasn't like a dramatic bump. And this effectively, within two days, had him clearing bowls once again. And he, would, he downed full bowls of water, full bowls of food and right now he's effectively 100% healed you effectively see no um, evidence of him missing a ball uh, but you do see that one of the bulges is larger than the other and right now he still can breed if um, I wanted to pair him with one but I've effectively made the decision to keep him as a pet uh, he's become a lot more aggressive since this incident, so um, I also don't want to be releasing him. Um, a lot of people like to keep these guys and they like to keep them nice. Um, but at this point, he is still nice. Um, I am trying to calm him back down, um, but he is a rather bad aggressor in his cage and he will attack you when you open his cage. Um, so at this point, there's really nothing I can do. Um, I'm gonna keep him as a pet, and he's gonna be an ambassador of what can actually go wrong when breeding Lichianus. So this 
is the perpetrator. She actually um, has some damage to herself as well, which I am currently watching um, because the male in fighting with her actually took off a chunk of her shoulder. Uh, and I'm gonna try to show you guys here. Um, she is getting a daily betadine solution as well on this uh, wound, but at this point she is on her own. She will not be repaired. She is a aggressor, but at the same time, she did get some wounds herself from the male. Uh, so I want to make sure that she is okay as well. She does have some damage to her nose and her arm is actually the worst piece about her. Uh, the skin's just flapping. She has already seen the vet as well. The vet said to continually clean this area and then it, the skin that's flapping will effectively uh, fall off and then regrow um, and she will be permanently scarred. But uh, at this point, she's currently being left alone to heal. She is gravid still. Uh, she does have eggs within her that should still be coming out. But I need to be watching this arm rather closely um, because I don't, uh, I don't like the way that it's looking. But this is what can happen and what can transpire when breeding Lichianus. So this is just two stories and they're actually very, very minor stories. My worst story is actually with a brass female that I currently have paired with a brass that I brought in from Leaping Leeches. She was paired to my favorite brass male, um, which is from the Bro One line of Northern Gecko. She effectively chomped on his side so hard that she caused his liver to rupture within him. Um, his health went downhill almost instantaneously and by the morning I found him lethar lethargic at the base of his cage and um, I tried to bring him to the side, I tried to warm him up, add some uh, fluids, nothing was working. I called the vet and they said that they only had something available three days later. Um, so I tried to get in contact with the emergency vet that had treated my other male last year. Um, at this point, uh, it was it was very very scary, and uh, he it was just too far gone. Um, at this point, the decision had to be made: was he is suffering? Um, I need to bring him to the vet to put him down. Once I made this decision, um, his health made a turn for the worst, and effectively within 15 minutes of calling the vet and prepping to take him to the vet to put him down, he had passed away. Um, this is the re main reason why if you ever see me posting on Instagram, on Facebook, or even on here, I'm always saying that Lichianus breeding is not for the faint of heart. It is something where when you pair a male and a female, you have to be ready for the worst case scenario. You have to have a vet on speed dial just in case because it will happen. I currently have 14 pairs of Lichianus um, with another call it eight pairs growing up and I'm effectively ready for this to happen again um, because this is just part of the endeavor and it's not something that I like to say is going to happen but it will happen um, so you just got to be ready for that that's my video thank you for watching um, please like comment and subscribe and if you have any questions please feel free to send us a DM on Instagram on Facebook or just leave a comment down below thanks